in today's video i want to share what is the best practice for implementing authorization with oa2 protocol here i am taking example of a tick tick task manager and in one of my project i want to display or get all of the task in the projects into my application so for that we need to first authenticate using their or2 protocol and then i will be able to use their api so implementing it uh, authorization in this kind of setup generally um, have three steps first step is to redirect user to the application for which we want to make the request so in this case here is tick tick it can be google calendar google drive and anything that user need to authorize so there will be no password and things like that in our end our application will redirect user to the application which we want to authorize and then in second step we will get the code the code will be provided by the application server for which we want to authenticate and finally the third step is where we will get the access token by sharing this code that we get in second step and get the access token and then this access token will save somewhere in database and then use it for our further api request let me show you a workflow in laravel let's make it a bit bigger so here in web.php we will just need two routes one to redirect user to the application and then second route to handle the callback so this callback will contain the code from the first step and after getting code the third step um, our final step will be to call their api using the access token so let's go into this controller and see the first step so first step is redirect to tick tick so we will get these id client id from the applications dashboard or the api that is providing these will provide the dashboard or something so that we can generate the app and get the client id in case of the tick tick uh, it give us this developer center from where we can create the new app and you can name it something for now you don't need to do anything just edit so here we will get the client id and secret and here we have to register our applications url and here we need to register the a redirect url in our case the redirect url will be this one so we have to register this in the application and save it that's all we need to do and once we get this client id and we specify callback id then we will uh, redirect user to that url with all the query parameter as is specified in the documentation we need to provide these parameters so this differ according to application so let's see this in action so this is my application and this is the endpoint that user needs to be uh, redirected to and from here we'll get this kind of screen which you are familiar you get in case of authentication using google and things like that and here are the scopes define what the uh, application will be able to do once you authorize and once we allow it will give us the code and we will use that code and get the access token and make the request and get all the task in this particular project so here are three tasks and we are getting that in our application so let me show you the second endpoint which is this handle callback 
So in callback only got this code. If there is no code, then we say authorization failed. If there is code, then what we'll do is we'll send the post request to this endpoint and give them this code and they will give us the access token like so here and we save this access token to the users table or anywhere so that you can use in the api request whenever you make the api request and we need to make api request in this route so we are doing like this and passing in the saved access token and whenever the token expires or something happens so we need to try catch in this block so whenever the token expires then this access token will return uh, like unauthorized or unauthenticated then we need to know that it is unauthorized and again then user again the user needs to be redirected to this url so that they get the access token so this differs according to api some cases uh, in some cases they provide us a refresh token here in this step they provide us a refresh token and we will use that token to get another new token to make the request in api so this differs according to application so if we want to build this kind of or2 flow then we need to use liable passport so sanctum is just for a simple personal token that you can use generate uh, from dashboard and use so this is for complete OAuth workflow hope you like the video i will see you on next video thank you